Thank you very much for the introduction. Um, and thank you very much to Ezekiel for a fantastic welcome to country. And I'd just like to add my acknowledgements to the traditional custodians of the lands where we are. Um, as Ezekiel told you, this is Cabi Cabi land, and that covers off four of our campuses. But we also have the Bachelor people who are the traditional custodians of the lands where our Harvey Bay campus is. Um, a beautiful spot if you get a chance to travel up there for those who might be here from out of state. Um, so welcome, welcome to UniSC on the Sunshine Coast, the slightly misnamed at the moment Sunshine Coast, um, but we're not going to complain because we haven't had a lot of rain for a while, particularly in Southeast Queensland. So we're all very happy that it's raining. You might be less so, but we're happy that it's raining. We're also really pleased that you've chosen to have your conference here at the University of the Sunshine Coast. You're all going to be sharing your experiences with citizen science and the fantastic work that you're doing. And there's lots of citizen science that happens here at the university. And we're really proud to be able to share that with you as well. A big thank you to all of these sponsors as well. Obviously, UniSC is helping to sponsor, but there's a lot of others who have lent their support to this conference, many of whom are also really strong partners with the university. So thank you to all of those groups. So to me, citizen science is really some of the best science that can be done. And there's lots of reasons for that. Yes, it can also be pretty challenging. I've been involved in a number of citizen science projects, and I think really the scale of them, which is one of their great benefits, but also one of the things that makes them quite challenging to organize. You've got a lot of people that you're generally organizing, and those people have got lives. As scientists, a little less so, we live and breathe our science. But a lot of people who get involved in citizen science, they've got other priorities in their life. But it also means that it can be the most impactful type of science that happens. So impact gets measured in many, many different ways. <clears throat> scientists tend to think of impact as publishing papers. I would argue that that's one, and sometimes not the most. Um, <clears throat> For any of the scientists to go and look at their profile on Google Scholar and find that bit of work they did 20 years ago and there's no citations for it, it's all a little bit depressing. And I think you could argue that maybe it wasn't the most impactful thing that we've done. But one of the aspects of science that I think is a little bit underdone is actually that level of engagement with the community. So we often get a research grant, we go and do our science, and then we publish those results or we write a report for someone. But where do we take that information back to the community? Where do we share it with the people who have paid for it and will benefit from that science? And I think that's something that a traditional stream of science is a little underdone in. And the, the um, industry groups that I work with, it's an essential part of that, where we get involved in community days, community education, and I think some of the most fulfilling. Citizen science flips that on its head. It's science that's developed and driven by citizens, by the community. And for that reason, it immediately has impact because the science is being done by the community, the community that will benefit, the community that lives in the lands where that work is being done. And quite frankly, the community that probably paid for it as well. So I think that level of impact and that direct level of impact in citizen science is one of the real shining lights. One of the other um, aspects around citizen science as well is that it demonstrates that there should be no boundaries around science. Anyone can do science. Science is a philosophy, it's a method, it's a way of doing things, it's a way of thinking. And that's not restricted to people who have been trained in a university as a scientist, or even, you know, you could have come to university or not, you could have done arts, you could have done humanities, it doesn't matter. It's a way of thinking and it's a way of being, and anybody can get involved in that. And I think that's one of the really, really important aspects of, of it. It breaks down barriers about what science is and lets people see what it is and that it's actually attainable for everybody who wants to get involved. I think probably one of the final parts of citizen science that always impresses me is scale. As an individual researcher, there's a limit to how much I can do. So I'm a field biologist, I'm a chip bat biologist. And so if I go out to the field at night, there's one of me and I can be very, very limited in what I can do. I might take two or three people with me, that's a bit better. But some of the research in citizen science I've been involved in involves city-wide biodiversity snapshots. So a single night covering an entire city at the same time. That can't be done without community involvement. And the impact of having a city-wide biodiversity snapshot is far beyond anything that I could have ever done on my own. 
So I think that scale is something that really is one of the most impactful sides in terms of citizen science. I did a little bit of homework before I came. And I, for some reason, I went to the South Australian Citizen Science government website. Maybe because I was trying not to be biased towards Queensland. Maybe because they had good IT people and it popped up in my search first. But I think some of the projects, there's, there's four of them here that I, that I came across and did a little bit of reading on. And I think it exemplifies things like scale and community involvement and impact. So the first is the Kangaroo Island Fire, fire Recovery. So Kangaroo Island, pretty big place. And the fire, fire is part of our ecosystem. Fire is a, an integral part of our ecosystem. It's very important, but it can also have devastating impacts. And to be able to involve a community in assessing the impacts and the recovery of fire is something, again, that takes the scale of a community to do. do. One I love, Echidna CSI. And I thought, of course, because these silly ads that are on the telly, I thought Echidna's crime scene investigation and things intrigued, no, citizen science investigation um, as well. But the final one was Fungi Map. Now, my uh, aunt in law um, was a nun, um, but was also the world expert on New Zealand fungi. Um, and so I've always had a little bit of a passion for fungi as well from sitting down and chatting to her. But the idea that you can map all the different types of fungi across Australia using citizen science, it's the only way you can do it, uh, to have that sort of scale and to have that sort of impact. So I sort of share them with you because I think it exemplifies people getting involved in science. Anyone can do science. The impact of it is immediate on things like the community, on areas that have been affected by bushfire, um, but also the scale at which it can so it's really clear that citizen science plays a really important role in science in Australia and around the world. So I'd like to finish by thanking you all for your efforts, for your time to come here, for all of the science that you do, for all of the community engagement that you do, and wish you all the best for your conference. And I wish I could stay, but unfortunately, there's paper that needs to be pushed. So enjoy your, enjoy your three days of your conference. Thank you.